Rob and welcome to Axel's Garage. Today we're out here with the TJ and this is a 1998 four cylinder Jeep TJ. Uh, nothing special. And we noticed a few weeks ago when it rained we were having a little bit of tr trouble with the idle. The idle would drop down and then when it stopped raining it would dry out, the idle would come back up. It, it continually got worse to the point that it's been dry for a couple days and it's still doing it and what it's doing now is it's not maintaining an idle. Once it warms up it no longer maintains its idle, and as soon as you put your foot on the clutch to put it into neutral, you stop at a stop sign or a stoplight, it stalls on you. And you can't get it started again without giving it some throttle. And on a fuel-injected vehicle, you really there's no reason to be giving it throttle to get it started again. So what we're thinking is it's the throttle position sensor. And the reason why we're thinking throttle position sensor is purely because we have a spare one, um, so that makes it an easy troubleshooting trick. But the other reason why we're thinking of that is because we did have our 97 TJ. We had the wire fall off of the throttle position sensor because the little plastic clippy was broken. And it was given the same type of behavior. Because that wire was off, we also had a check engine light in that other vehicle. This one, we don't have a check engine light, but it is ex exhibiting the same behaviors as that 97 did when the throttle position sensor wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. So we're going to swap out throttle position sensors, hopefully solve our problem. Either way, we'll show you how to get that throttle position sensor out and back in again. All right, what we're going to do right now is we're just going to show you a real short clip of how the engine acts after it warms up a little bit when you stop at a, at a light. This is, it's not fully warmed up, so it's not going to stall on us, but it's going to, the idle's going to drop down and you're going to hear it, you know, going up and down, still well below where it should normally be at, but you're going to hear it going up and down, and this is what starts to happen as it warms up until it gets to the point where, as soon as you take your, put your foot on the clutch, the thing starts. Okay, our throttle position sensor is located on the back of the throttle body. So, in order to make it easier, we're going to take this air box off so that we can see back there. Okay, with everything removed, you have your throttle body here, and you have your throttle position sensor right behind it. You unplug your connector for your throttle position sensor, and just try to tuck everything out of the way. Now, the throttle position sensor itself looks just like this, it goes onto the back of the throttle body, wire connector goes there, so you're going to take your wire connector off and you're going to have two bolts that go in there. Those bolts, sometimes you get new bolts with a throttle position sensor, sometimes you don't. This particular one did not come with new bolts. So you, it's going to be a T20, T20 Torx, it's a size T20 Torx, it goes in the back. You're going to have to make up something because a, a screwdriver is not going to fit back there. So I took a little Torx bit and a quarter inch socket with a quarter inch drive ratchet. And just like that, went behind it and we'll get those screws out. One thing that I recommend doing is taking a, a shop rag and stuffing your throttle opening with a shop rag so that you don't drop anything inside it when you're taking these little screws out. Alright, so here's your old one, here's the connectors on the back, that's your actual, uh, there's a blade on the back of the throttle that goes in there and every time the throttle turns, it turns this, so this senses where the where, what position the throttle is in, and it sends a signal back to the computer to give it uh, timing or fuel or air as it needs based on the throttle position. That's pretty much the dumb dumb way of explaining what this thing does. While you have everything apart, not a bad idea to take some throttle body or carb cleaner and get in there. If your throttle body on the inside is pretty dirty, get in there. Mine is pretty dirty. I'm going to get in there, in there and wash everything out and clean it up with a shop rig. 
All right, so after washing out the throttle body with some throttle body or carb cleaner, getting all those deposits off, you'll see where the butterfly sits. There's usually a line of, of carbon buildup. That can affect everything as well. So you wash all that out real good. Once you're done with that, stick something in the butterfly to let it hold itself open for five or 10 minutes just to evaporate all that excess carb cleaner. Plug your throttle position sensor into the harness. Don't install it yet. Plug it into the harness and start the vehicle up to flush out any of that carb cleaner that might be in your intake. You'll have to give the, the vehicle a little throttle to get it started. Once you do that and you get the vehicle running, you can tell I don't even have the throttle position sensor connected to the throttle body and my idle is smoothed out. So a lot of that carbon buildup might have had something to do with it. So I just got to run it for a couple minutes just to clear that carb cleaner out. I'm going to turn it off before it gets hot and I'll install the throttle position sensor the same way on the back of the car, put it in, just get those screws, you know, fairly tight. They don't have to crank down on them, they're only small Torx head bits. So just give them a little crank down, nothing crazy, and then you can button everything back up. All right, so once you got your throttle position sensor screwed back into the back of the throttle body, you connect your wires, make sure everything is routed away from any heat source where the wires might melt or anything. If you need to use a cable tie or a zip tie, to keep the wires neat and out of the way of any heat where they're going to get either frayed or um, or melt or the insulation get melted and have them short out from the heat. Now's a good time to do that. Before I button everything up, I just want to give it a test start, make sure it starts up okay, and we're going to do that now. So I put my airbox back on, bolted everything back up, went for a little test drive. The vehicle runs great. I got my high idle back even because the high idle um, works through that throttle position sensor and the engine uh, coolant temperature sensor to let the computer know whether or not the engine is warmed up or not. So I actually got my high idle back. I got a good constant idle. Now it's idling about normal speed, you know, just around 800 or so. It's purring like a kitten. Mission accomplished. Didn't cost me anything because we happen to have a throttle position sensor on the shelf. But if you had to buy one, about 30 bucks, uh, Amazon and eBay both had them around the same price. Ship free to your house. It's a home run. Real easy, quick fix. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give us that thumbs up. And if you enjoy what we're doing here at Axel's Garage, please subscribe to our channel. That's all we have today. Thanks for watching.